In my previous video, I showed you why we use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink when we want to reproduce a color image. This time around, I'm going to show you how, with a full color photograph, can we convert from red, green, and blue to cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and specifically, how do you figure out where to use black? So let's dive in and take a look. So I want to print this image. And I'm going to print it using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink because each one of those absorbs one of these colors, red, green, and blue. And to start with, let's do that in the simplest way we could think of, which I'm actually going to have to be a little fancy with in Photoshop. I'll run an action that's going to do it for me. All I'm going to do is have Photoshop convert this image into CMYK mode. It's similar to what you get if you did this. But I want to show you what it would look like if we didn't use any K. The K stands for black because some people refer to cyan as blue, so they didn't want to use the letter B. So I'm going to convert this to CMYK mode without using any black whatsoever. In fact, I'm just going to copy what's in the red here and I'm going to put it in the cyan. I'm going to copy what's here in the green and put it in the magenta. And I'm going to copy what's here in the blue and put it in the yellow. I'll do that via an action so I don't have to go through all the steps. Here goes. This right now is the identical contents to what we used to have in the red, green, and blue uh, portions of the image. And you notice this dark area of the picture does not look black, especially when you compare it to the before version. And so let's figure out what we could do to compensate for that. So I'm going to go to our layers panel and let's see if we can improve on this image. Why don't we go down here and add an adjustment layer? The kind I'm going to use is known as the channel mixer. But before I go into it, let me pull the layers panel out so it's floating and therefore you can be viewing the channels panel while I do it. So I'll come down here to the adjustment layer icon and I'm going to choose channel mixer because literally only thing the channel mixer does is it mixes together these images that you see over here in the channels panel. And the only thing I want to do is say, why don't we take some of the information that's in the cyan, the magenta, in the yellow channels and push it down into here because black ink is going to make this look darker, I think. So up here it says output channel and I'll say let's affect only black. Then it wants to know what to put in black. It wants to begin with 100% of what used to be in black. Well, I could come in here and just set it to zero to say don't use any of what was in black. But since black was had nothing in it, that means we're using nothing of nothing. Now let's come up here and say, let's take some of what's in the cyan channel. Let's take 33% of it and let's push it into the black. Now the moment I did that, you can see over in the channels panel, it got a little darker and the picture is looking better. Then let's go to magenta and let's put 33% of it in there as well. Then let's go down here to yellow and put in 33% of it. So we have 33% an equal amount of each one of the channels that had information in it. Now, if you look at the image, that's obviously too dark. So now with that adjustment layer active, I'm just going to lower the opacity of it to lessen its effect. If I bring it all the way down to zero, you'll see what it looked like originally. And now I'll slowly bring it up until I think the density is looking nice and somewhere maybe around there, 60, maybe 70%. The dark areas are looking nice and dark. I think I can back off a little bit there, maybe about 50%. Okay, but the image as a whole is looking a bit dark. And that's because we're using this amount of cyan, magenta, and yellow. We threw some black into it, but we didn't take any of this stuff back out. So let's take some of this out. Now, in order to do that in the channel mixer, there's a bunch of things you'd have to change around. You'd have to go here to cyan, magenta, and yellow one at a time and mess with the sliders. And I just don't feel like doing it that way. So instead, I'm going to do an adjustment layer called levels. And in levels, I'm going to go and double click to the right of the name of the layer, this empty spot right here. And I'm just going to turn off the checkbox for black. And that means whatever I do in levels right now, cannot affect black. But since these checkboxes are turned on, it can affect those. So I'll click OK. 
Then here's my levels adjustment. It says CMYK up here, but because of those checkboxes, it can't do anything to black. But if I grab this little slider here, if you look at the channels panel, moving it one way will brighten, moving it the other way will darken. So I could move whichever sliders in here I think would be useful to brighten it up and use a little bit less cyan, magenta, and yellow and see if we can compensate that way. All right, let's say that's good enough. Now we've done somewhat of what Photoshop would do when we convert an image to CMYK mode. It doesn't just copy what's in cyan, magenta, and yellow and go and leave it at that. Instead, it does what's known as black generation. And that's where it looks at these three pieces that you started with when you're in RGB mode. And it says, hey, let's grab some of that and push it down here into the black. Then it ends up lightening up the cyan, magenta, and yellow to compensate because you put a lot of black in there. It just does it in a more sophisticated way than this. Because right now, if you look at the black channel, there's not very much black in there. We could use a lot more and it could be a lot more effective. So I'm gonna revert this image to its original. Uh, now, if I go to the file menu, I doubt it's gonna let me because it didn't start off in CMYK mode. So that's grayed out, but I bet you I can cheat. If I go to the history panel, the topmost entry in the history panel is always the original picture. And so I just click on that and that will revert me back to what we started with. When we started, we were in RGB mode. Then let's go over here and change the mode of the picture to CMYK and it will do what I just showed you, but in a much more sophisticated fashion. Let's look at the end result. There's cyan, magenta, and yellow. Those are based off of what was in the red, green, and blue, but it lightened up quite a bit and it used a lot more black. But I think this one looks much better than what I did myself because it uses much more sophisticated adjustments. But the main thing to know is that cyan, magenta, and yellow simply absorb red, green, and blue. It's just a matter of using inks instead of using light. And to make things better, black helps out because combining cyan, magenta, and yellow at 100% doesn't really give you a nice black. Converting to CMYK mode is only needed when you're going to send an image off to be printed on a commercial printing press. That means it's gonna be reproduced in a magazine, a book, or something else where you're gonna make thousands of copies. If you're gonna only print to an inkjet printer that's sitting on your desk, usually that printer has more than just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. There might be multiple shades of each of those colors and it might even have some other colors of ink built in and therefore it's better to just send the RGB file to be printed and have the printer driver do the conversion. But if you're gonna print on a commercial printing press, either you or someone you give your file to will eventually need to convert that image to CMYK mode. I'm Ben Wilmore, and I'll see you next time.